They never met the singer and the swinger. You okay? They walked around each other. So do you have a job or do you just make money playing guitar? <laughs> I'm a lifeguard. Calmly swim back. Here is the the, the safeness. Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick. Alonzo, Matt, Christy. Um, we may burst into song at any moment because we're talking about <laughs> God Help the Girl. God Help the Girl is this charming little Scottish musical from Stuart Murdoch, who was what the lead singer and songwriter of Bell and Sebastian. He writes and directs here. Emily Browning stars as a troubled young woman who has escaped from a mental hospital, and she wanders the streets and bursts into song, and magical things happen to her. Take a look. Ladies and gents, Eve Carmen. They know the dance too well, the body's heavenly. This is James. And Cassie, this is Anton. Bye, guys. Dignity. All over this town, hundreds of bands are having name conversations. Thousands of punks, goths, psychobillies, indie kids, rockers, and just general knobheads <laughs> arguing about what to call themselves. I think you just hate people. don't get together, then every song and every film and every book I've ever heard, seen and read are wrong. God help the girl, she needs all the help she can get. She is unbelievable. Yep. Life is tragic. So good. Twee is a word we use quite a bit around here. <laughs> <laughs> Twee is a word that could be used to describe Bell Sebastian's music mm -hmm. and this movie but it's kind of charming. Yeah, I mean, if, if you are resolutely opposed to movies where people burst into song, <laughs> this is not your film. Uh, if, like me, that's a plus, then this is definitely your film. And if you're in the middle, you know, you might go for it. <laughs> you like this a lot. I like this a lot more than I thought I was going to. Uh, I'm not a huge Bell and Sebastian fan. Um, I'm not always into musicals, but I, I liked this. Uh, I like that they sold that they would acknowledge that they just burst into song in yeah, this. There's, there's a line, to it. yeah, there's a line where one of the characters says to the other, like, are you the kind of person that just sings to people? And, and, <laughs> I, and there's also a line where, like, are we really gonna write a song by committee? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I liked the music in this. I think the music helped move the story forward. I, I liked the way um, the characters kind of interacted with each other. It, it, the movie didn't go in directions I expected it to go to, and it acknowledged when it didn't. It, it acknowledged, well, you know, we should have done this back then, or you know, I know it seems like we should do this, but we're not going to. And I, I, you know, there's a little bit of self-awareness there that I, I enjoyed in this. Um, there's an imperfection to it that I found kind of pleasing, right? Mm -hmm. Like the musical numbers are not big, glossy. Choreographed. Yeah, they're yeah. not. I mean, they they dance around, but even the dancing is like not perfect and a little awkward sometimes. And yeah. maybe they're not always on key. And I kind of like the intentional messiness of it because it gave it a realism in a world that is fantastical. I mean, sure. this definitely takes a lot of his influence from like French New Wave. I mean, there's definitely like a, a la la kind of element to it, but then the song is keep the 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 messiness of the songs keeps it grounded and also the fact that she's what, she's anorexic? Is that yeah, that's that what she's was, in for? Yeah, anorexic and suicidal, so that yeah. definitely, you know, gives us some Yeah, heft the, the, the fact that you're right, that the dancing isn't always perfect, the singing always isn't always perfect makes it all seem more spontaneous. Mm -hmm. It just makes it feel like they're just bursting forth of that in the moment and hadn't rehearsed it, you know. Well, and one of the things this movie does really well is it shows three characters who have a passion for music, and it really made it really helps you buy into that. It's they're not paying these actors are not paying lip service to that. You get the feeling that these characters really do have the level of passion about making music that the director has, mm -hmm. especially knowing who the director is, and that becomes somewhat infectious. And I guess as a music fan, that really touched me, and I really liked it. Yeah, you can tell in movies that are about, hey, let's get a band together, you know, when it's bullshit and when it's not. And this definitely, you buy these characters, you buy them as musicians, you buy them as people who are just, this stuff's bursting out of them all the time. Having you know? said that, the, mu the musical elements of it are the strongest parts. When they stop and talk, it's a little clunky. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of awkward pauses, and it's a little dull, at least for the, the first half or so, I would say. Well, you know, they're 
there, I think maybe that's part of the point that these the people are, that, they, that these kids are sort of inarticulate. But it's when they make music that they actually have something to say. They I come alive. Know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm be, I'm being too kind. But no, I I, I, I agree. The musical parts are the strongest. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I, I think that uh, you know you I, you probably already know whether or not you want to see this movie. <laughs> I'll put it that way. <laughs> if you don't, then tea. don't. But you, you know, know. You, I, I, I was somebody who came into this not really all that excited about it, okay. um, and it really converted me. And really, like 15 minutes in, oh, wow. I, okay. yeah, okay. I, I was really sold on it very early on. And it's a part of the reason my score is so high mm -hmm. is I think it caught me off guard how much I liked it. That opening sequence is pretty powerful, where she climbs out the window and just starts singing and walking around, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and she has she has such a startling presence about her, such an openness about her face and her eyes. And Emily Brown makes some really terrible decisions sometimes as far as the movies that she makes, mm -hmm. like Sucker Punch, like. Plush. You know, actors go where the work is. Yeah. You but really can't blame them half the time. But <laughs> she's, there's such an interesting element to her personality. There's like a, an innocence and I yet now, a damage. I now get her. Do you now you know, get because her? Because after, after Sucker Punch, I was like, did she, you know, the movie's so terrible, I just didn't, it didn't make me think, oh, I want to see her again in something else. <laughs> but now that I've seen her in this, I'm like, okay, Emily Browning, I get it. I get what you bring yeah. to the table. You know. She was in Lemony Snicket when she was no. a little girl. Okay, so what, what are our numbers, please? You're going high. Uh, eight. Okay, I'm saying 6.8. And you're I was seven, it was 7.6. 7.6. So 7.4, 7.5 in that range somewhere. Math. Is that correct? Yeah, 7.4, 7.5. There you go. Okay. okay. So uh, where is it? 71% on the tomato meter <laughs> okay, right now. Okay, it's, it's in. Is it on VOD? Maybe. It's in. Uh, it movies. is. It is actually on VOD. So yeah, wherever you are, even if you are not in a town that has you know art films, you can get it on your computer. Bye.